Market to Market is everywhere you are. Subscribe to Market to Market on YouTube, find us on the PBS video app to stream on demand, and add our three podcasts on your favorite podcasting app. Betsy Haley is holding the line. Plotting where the enemy might next attempt to cross the mountains, she has just dispatched the fifth flight of the day. The enemy she's fighting? Rabies. A virus, fatal if left untreated, that has struck fear in humans for generations. In the United States, however, the rabies threat doesn't look like it used to when it comes to host animals. It's less of this and more of this. In the early part of the 1900s, dogs were the primary carriers in the U.S. But between public awareness campaigns and the enactment of dog vaccination mandates in most states, that has changed. Today, wildlife are more likely to carry rabies than the nation's domestic animals. Foxes and bats have been a constant threat, but the bigger danger in recent decades came from skunks and raccoons. Haley and others at USDA's Wildlife Services have been working to help reduce the prevalence among raccoons and other wildlife. The focus is actually on raccoons and skunks because those are the animals that seem to encounter humans more, uh, especially raccoons. Raccoons seem to be that warm, fuzzy critter that everybody wants to get closer to or befriend. Since the 1990s, officials have been crisscrossing the countryside in planes and helicopters, dropping vaccine-filled packets covered with a sweet coating to attract the raccoons. Our work is to distribute oral rabies vaccine baits for raccoons, uh, starting from Maine down to Alabama. And my main focus is coordinating all of that and helping to map the areas that we're going to distribute the baits in. When the raccoon variant of rabies began moving north from Florida in the 1940s and was accidentally accelerated by some trappers in the 1970s, federal officials took notice and began a campaign to confine the disease. Fortunately, the Appalachian Mountains offered a natural barrier that slowed the progression of the virus. An additional drag was placed on the migration of the disease by the development and distribution of these rabies vaccines. The battle, however, isn't over. Rabid raccoon attacks still happen today along the East Coast. Lori Rose says she spotted the raccoon when she heard her chicken, Alice, squawking Saturday evening. That's when she came outside to put Alice in her pen. It just charged me. And I slipped and it grabbed a hold of my heel and it would not let go. You could Rabid raccoon attacks still happen today along the East Coast. The Boston area woman, bitten earlier this summer, received the proper rabies treatment quickly, which is key to surviving exposure through a bite or scratch. The command center for the raccoon rabies bait drop on this particular day in August was the airport near North Lima in eastern Ohio. Over four days, the team would distribute 700,000 bait packets. This project itself is covering portions of eastern Ohio, western Pennsylvania, and a little bit of northern West Virginia. We chose this area because it is the western edge of the raccoon rabies front. In many states, although it can fluctuate, the number of rabies-infected wildlife appears to be declining over the past 15 years. That includes Ohio, where wildlife biologist Jeff Rains is based. At the height of the, the raccoon rabies positives in Ohio, we had over 20 cases of rabies um, in a calendar year. and. Um, through the work of the Ohio Rabies Management Program and the National Rabies Management Program, there's been a, a decline in, in the number of cases per year. In 2020, we only had one positive animal, and so far in 2021, we have only found one. 
officials with wildlife services drop the packets over the woods and fields where raccoons are likely to live, avoiding releasing over homes or populated areas. Through complex um, calculations, the, the National Rabies Management Program staff um, determine how many baits need to go out in a certain area. So for this flight, I'll, we'll have roughly 12,000 baits, and that can fluctuate from 10 to 20,000 baits, depending on the area that we're working. We'll have a total of 15 flights today. Anyone who finds a bait packet should put on gloves before picking it up and moving it to a wooded area. And no matter what, avoid going near raccoons, particularly if they are stumbling around or acting strangely. If you do get bitten, the best thing to do is to clean and wash that infected area and then contact your health, local health department immediately. The number of humans dying from rabies has dropped over time, and it is now rare in the U.S. Just a few years ago, however, a Delaware woman died of the disease. State officials say she may have been exposed to rabies through a scratch from a feral cat or one of her own. She was the state's first confirmed rabies death in 77 years. While eliminating all variants of rabies from the U.S. may be impossible because of the difficulty in delivering vaccines to bats, the variant often carried by raccoons could be eliminated. The ultimate goal is to eradicate rabies from the eastern U.S. For Market to Market, I'm Colleen Bradford-Krantz.